Hi everyone, I'm Ned Bellavance, a cloud developer advocate for Linode. I wanted to talk to you today about the cloud provider landscape and investigate an interesting and emerging category, the alternative cloud providers. When you think of the public cloud, you probably think of what is commonly referred to as hyperscalers. You know, AWS, Azure and the like. They are the most well known, but they are certainly not the only game in town. If I were to break it into a taxonomy, you've got the hyperscalers at the top, defined by their massive scale, massive number of services, and massive number of clients. The alternative cloud providers, of which Linode is one, are defined by their relative simplicity, core services, and affordability. They may not have all the advanced services of the hyperscalers, more on that in a moment, but they do present you with a bill that a mere mortal can actually comprehend, so that's nice. Then there are the traditional web hosters and virtual private servers that absolutely serve a purpose. And that purpose is to host a website with varying levels of control over the virtual machine and underlying hardware. Traditional web hosters share in the simplicity, but lack some of the key features you might want when building out an application or service. While they may not have the whiz-bang features of hyperscalers, alternative cloud providers absolutely have what I call core cloud primitives. Things like compute, networking, and storage, what we might also refer to as infrastructure as a service. It's similar to what you might have in your data center, except it offers a managed experience with flexible capacity and self-service features. IaaS is a great fit for traditionally built applications, and you might be surprised to learn that IaaS is the single most popular service far and away on any of the hyperscalers. Why might that be? There's two reasons why customers love IaaS. First, it's a platform they understand, and they can easily move applications from their existing data center to it. There's no need for massive refactoring efforts. You can just lift and shift. The other major reason is that if you're building an application or a service for clients, you might have concerns about lock-in. If you go all in with the latest serverless offerings from your friendly hyperscaler, you'll find that it will be quite difficult to move your application to another cloud you might be wondering about net new cloud native applications. Well, there is a common platform available for that as well, and that platform is, you guessed it, Kubernetes. You probably won't be surprised to hear that all the hyperscalers now have Kubernetes as a service, but you might not realize that many of the alternative cloud providers, like Linode, are offering Kubernetes as a service as well. Leveraging Kubernetes as a common platform removes the fear of lock-in and allows you to easily migrate your application to the provider that meets your needs. So we've got cloud primitives of IaaS and Kubernetes giving us the platform to build our applications, and they're available across all the public cloud providers. What are some other things to be on the lookout for? Number one, reliability. You don't want to deploy your application only to have it go down when you need it most. You need a cloud provider that is reliable and secure. Number two, affordability. Your cloud provider should have affordable offerings with sane defaults to keep you from going way over budget. For instance, with Linode, you can get a glance at compute, storage, and transfer pricing using Linode's cloud estimator or get a more personalized recommendation based on your specific technical needs using the total cost of ownership calculator. Links for both of these tools are in the description. Number three, regional coverage. Your cloud provider needs to have a presence in the locations that matter to your customers and you. Number four, simplicity. Even though I put this last, it might be the most important. Have you ever hit the services dropdown on AWS? Whew, it's a myriad maze of oddly named services. Do I know what all of them do? Vaguely. Do I know how they work, what the best practices are, how the billing works, and what security issues might arise? No. If your plan is to consume IaaS or Kubernetes services to build the next great thing, then the amazingly complex ecosystem of services on the hyperscalers is just noise distracting you from your goal. It makes sense to favor a simpler interface, a simple and complete set of cloud primitives, and most importantly, simple billing. That's often the number one concern of businesses when they consider the cloud. The selection of a cloud provider is, after all, a business decision. And as an IT professional, I know that I'm there in the service of the company I work for. I'm there to move their goals forward 
in the most cost-effective way. I'm looking for a solution that doesn't overcomplicate things, gives me control over the things I care about, like spending, and also lets me change my mind down the road by keeping things portable. An alternative cloud provider like Linode is very likely to fit the bill. As you consider a cloud provider for your next project, remember that the alternative cloud providers could be the right fit. Building with cloud primitives on a simple, reliable, and affordable platform that also aligns with your business goals, that just kind of makes sense. I'd recommend checking out Linode to see how they stack up. Thanks for taking the time with me today. If you'd like to reach out, you can find me on Twitter at Ned1313, and you can find the fine folks at Linode at Linode.com. Thank you.